Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service here from St Michael's. Later on, Kate will be speaking into the parable of the unmerciful servant and we will be breaking bread together. So please do get some bread and be prepared for that part of our time. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for the gift of this day. Help us to worship you and to be near you in thought, word, and action. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, open all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35, the parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister? Who sins against me up to seven times Jesus answered I tell you not seven times but 77 times therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants as he began the settlement a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him since he was not able to pay the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how the Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. 
Lord, this morning as we reflect on the challenges contained in this parable, help us to have open minds and open hearts to what your word has to say to each one of us. Amen. A couple of years ago, we rented quite a remote farmhouse in Mid Wales. It was a beautiful place. And one day we decided to explore just a little bit further to go to the local town, do a bit of shopping, have a wander around. And it was a 20 minute drive away. We had a great time. And it was only when we went back to the car that things started to go terribly wrong. Uh, we switched on the sat nav and it announced to us that there was no signal. Not a problem, we thought, you know, five of us in the car, surely between us we can remember the way home. Well, in fact, it took us nearly two hours of driving around to find the way home. We went round and round in circles. I mean, after all, one hillside covered in sheep looks a little bit like another hillside covered in sheep. And we spent a good 20 minutes going at a very slow speed behind a tractor. And at one point we thought things are going to get better because there was a phone box and uh, we thought, well, maybe we'll get some idea about where we are by going into the phone box. And it was full of laminated maps. I suppose that reassured us that we weren't the only people to have got lost in this place. So we often have a joke about it now, uh, but things did get a little bit tense. The children in the back, all three of them were certainly getting a bit fidgety and restless. And I could see this sort of nervous twitch almost developing on Alistair's face as he tried to hold it together for nearly two hours in the car. So what had started off as quite a joyful and relaxing day had turned into something a little bit different, a little bit unexpected. And that's kind of how I felt when I first read the parable that we've just heard. It starts off so full of hope, doesn't it? There's this servant who pleads for mercy and has a huge debt wiped away. And then things take a bad turn when this same servant fails to show any forgiveness to another. And we have to ask ourselves, why? Why does he behave in this way? It staggers us, doesn't it? Now, Jesus tells the story in response to Peter's question, how many times do I have to forgive my brother or sister? And Peter comes up with a suggestion that it should be seven times. And that's actually quite generous. That's more than what the Jewish law would have expected. But Jesus says, no, no, you've got it all wrong. And different translations translate his words differently. It could be 70 or 70 times seven. But either way, the point is that you can't count. You can't keep a tally on forgiveness. And we know that forgiveness is vital to us as Christians. And we know that because in the Lord's Prayer, we're asked to continually pray for our own forgiveness and pray for the ability to be able to forgive others. It's up there in the Lord's Prayer with other daily essentials like our bread, what we need to live on. And I find it really interesting that the writer Tom Wright actually compares the act of forgiveness to breathing. And yet the very reason why we do need to constantly include it in our prayers is because we find it incredibly hard, don't we, if we're honest. We find it hard to forgive others and sometimes the problem is we can't forgive ourselves. Forgiveness is a really complex process, but having looked at this parable, it really does offer us some sound advice, some things that can really help us. So let's just begin with the opening scene. A king has called before him a servant and he's obviously a trusted friend as well as a servant because he's allowed this man access to his money. And the servant is summoned because it comes to the king's attention that this man who he has trusted actually owes him a fortune. Just to make you realise exactly how much it is, a talent is about 130 pounds of silver and it would take a labourer 15 years to earn that, which means that this servant actually owed the king about 150,000 years of labour. It would have been impossible to pay it back. And the king orders that this man and his wife and his children are sold on 
and that all of their property is sold. He's going to lose everything. And at this point, the man realises just what a mess he's in and falls prostrate in front of the king and begs for mercy. And it's at that point that the king does something unexpected and completely incredible. He's so touched by what the servant has done that he decides to show him mercy. Who could imagine that somebody would be prepared to wipe out such a debt? And what example would this give to other uh, servants would it allow them to think that they could take liberties with the king's fortune it's astonishing isn't it it can only be described i think as extravagant forgiveness and this is the first thing that this parable reminds us of we all have experienced extravagant forgiveness haven't we we have experienced the extravagant love and forgiveness of god but then the story moves on and the servant who's been forgiven, we are told, was no sooner out of that room when he was grabbing somebody by the neck and threatening them. Well, what can explain these actions? Well, reflecting on this, I thought that perhaps the servant had just left the room without really having time to ponder on everything that has happened to him. He just really hasn't given himself enough time to take in the enormity of what's just happened, of the great gift that's been given to him. And maybe he hasn't really forgiven himself for that close scrape he's had. You know, he nearly lost everything. It was a huge mess and he'd put his family in peril. So perhaps he's still caught up inside with feelings of guilt. And maybe the second thing that this parable teaches us then is that forgiveness, when it is offered to us, we need to really fully embrace it, really take it on board. We need to allow that healing to take place. We need to allow God to work in our lives so that we can forgive ourselves and not remain trapped in the past. And the man who the forgiven servant now seizes round the neck owes him about 100 days work, which is a lot, but of course doesn't compare at all uh, to what the servant who's been forgiven owed to the king. And we feel shocked by this man's pettiness, don't we? Here is a man who has somebody begging for mercy in front of him, just as he had been doing himself only a few minutes ago. And despite everything that's happened to him, he just can't find it in his heart to forgive. And this challenges us, because if we're honest, we all find it difficult to forgive at times. Forgiveness isn't easy. And yet the parable goes on to teach us one last thing. What happens if we fail to forgive? And if we read the story, a chain reaction starts to unfold. The unforgiving servant has the man who owes him money thrown into prison. And others who witness this and know who, how generous the king has been feel outraged. And they go back to the king and tell him what's happened. And the king is horrified and has a servant who he forgave thrown into prison and tortured until he can pay his full debt. So not forgiving, this parable teaches us, has consequences. It seems to set into action a chain of avoidable events that cause more and more hurt and what of the torturing surely this too is something perhaps we've experienced that sense of not being able to forgive someone or not being able to accept being forgiven that eats us up inside doesn't it it's not a healthy thing to hold on to it can be really destructive but there's also the opposite of that. If we do find the ability to forgive, it can be immensely freeing and powerful. And there are lots of examples of this, lots of wonderful people with inspiring stories who have shown real forgiveness. Thinking about it, I was reminded of the family of Anthony Walker, that young man who was robbed of his life um, in 2005 in a racially motivated killing 
and all of the family have spoken openly about what they felt was their absolute imperative to forgive. His mother said, I can't hate. We're a forgiving family. And that's extended to outside. So it wasn't hard to forgive because we don't just preach it, we practice it. And she went on to say, I brought up my children in this church to love. I teach them to love, to respect themselves and respect others. What does bitterness do? It eats you up. Such powerful words. And of course, this woman has gone on to um, work and offer lots of insights into how to prevent uh, racial divisions. And this kind of forgiveness is truly countercultural. And it has such an impact on everybody who hears about it. So we've had a lot to think about this morning in this parable. It challenges us all to act in that countercultural way. But it's impossible to do this, isn't it, without God's help? We need to keep ourselves rooted in prayer. Remember that pesky satnav I told you about before? When that satnav lost connection, it just couldn't tell us where we were. And if we don't maintain our connection with God, we too can go off course. We need to keep in touch with God, who forgives us and loves us unconditionally. He forgives us without keeping a tally. And this releases us from our past and enables us to, to have compassion and to love and to forgive. Amen. Come to the time of our service when we will share the peace with one another. And wherever you are, we share that with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And share that with one another. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, are we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Most, Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in, our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. that was shed for you, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Father of all, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and praise that, that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. And may you know God's blessing throughout this day and this week until we meet again.